What's up, Internet? This is John Modern, and today we are talking about the Commensal Meta Power SX in the race build. I'll, I'll start with saying I was uh, kind of an e-bike hater for a long time until this past winter. There's, there's an area that we like to ride here in the front range of Colorado that is really steep and really tough and has a lot of very cool downhills. Like, I, it's, I probably don't even know all of the runs, but you know, if you wanna go up there and get a full day, it's not, like, it's not like some of these trails where you go up and you climb for 50 minutes and descend for 20 and there's just kind of really one main descent. This place, ha it's, like a, it's like a bike park without a lift. And so everybody's always kind of been touting the e-bikes up there and how great they are. So finally, my buddy Dan and I went over to Commensal and rented a couple and I was just instantly sold. So now I've got an e-bike. It's not this one. We'll talk about the differences between what I bought and what I've got um and maybe what i wish i would have done differently but yeah here we are so this bike is on commensal's old clevis design it's not the virtual contact system that they're selling on their current models i don't know i don't really care so we'll go over geo spec ride impressions and a comparison to a couple other e-bikes and uh kind of conclude our thoughts after that so this bike i went with a large the large is a 485 mil reach at 6'1". I'm right in between large and XL for most brands. Their XL is 510. And for these, for this kind of like sizing, the XL is gonna feel a little big and the large is gonna feel a little small. I just kind of pick one and am happy with it and that's just the way it goes. I'll always adjust to the geometry and the sizing with either pick. I, I don't really get hung up on it too much except I do, I get hung up on it a ton actually. I don't know why I just said that as a complete lie. I get really hung up on it, but either way, I picked the large for this demo and I'm happy I did. The 485 reach felt a little short, but the bike felt awesome, especially where the terrain I was riding it in. So large 485 reach in the low setting, uh, the head tube angle 63.6 .6 degrees. The stack's 643 and the chain stays are 446 mil which I kind of liked, I, uh, I don't know. I don't, I'm kind of past the super short chain stays. You can manual or get the front wheel up on these longer chain stays just fine. And they offer a lot more stability descending at speed. And I think longer chain stays just climb better. You feel a little bit more in the middle of the bike. So yeah, that's the Geo, pretty sorted geometry wise. It's got the Bosch uh, Performance. Yeah, the Bosch Performance CX motor, which I think it's kind of the motor to get right now. I was looking around, just getting into e-bikes and this motor kind of was just coming out. And from what who everybody I'm talking to, the Shimano's are kind of hard to sell right now. And a lot of them are on discount, but I haven't ridden the Shimano, so I'm not gonna make any comparisons. All I can say is I love this Bosch motor. I love any motor. This is, I'm kind of new at e-bikes. So I, I think it rules. The kit, hats off to Commensal. The race kits kind of across the board for them are just, pretty spot on. The two, maybe three things I would change, two of them are wear items and the other is the saddle. I don't know many people just buying a bike and keeping the saddle anyway. Um, the two other bits for me, I'm not the biggest fan of the Schwalbe tires and I also like Meaty Paw grip. So I would I'd swap the grips and the tires probably after a, a couple of rides and then, uh, and then be completely happy. Otherwise the GX is sorted, no issues there, no tuning issues. The RockShox Super Deluxe Ultimate stuff, insanely easy to tune, predictable. You don't have 50 settings, you know, you get like seven or eight clicks or something like that, and you always know where you stand. You know, at first I was jumping this bike and I was kind of getting bucked a little bit, got to the bottom of the trail, two turns, two clicks on the rebound, and it felt perfect. Um, and that was kind of my experience tuning this RockShox stuff across the board. Uh, the TRP stoppers are amazing. Uh, they're really a standout on this bike, especially since these e-bikes are around 50 pounds. Um, the DT Swiss wheels, these are the HX 1700s, which I don't know, I've always ridden the 1700s that come on normal bikes. I guess this is the e-bike variant and they've held up great, no issues there. They've been comfortable. The KS Lev dropper's been fine. 
I would probably, if I got a large, I'd probably get a longer dropper because you can see, and this is my dilemma with larges, the dropper, the set, the seat post has to be way high, almost a lot of times higher than the handlebars, which is a little bit awkward, but no big deal because, you know, climbing is a breeze on e-bikes. I don't know. I, I'll talk about climbing briefly. It's it's great. I don't, there's, a, there's a motor, so I, I have no complaints. I also rode their TR with the Bosch motor. That's the one I rented when I first dabbled with e-bikes. And it was full 29, so maybe it climbed a little better, but the the differences, I just, I don't care at all about the differences in climbing. I'm not racing e-bikes. We're going, we're flying up the hill for sure, and we're having fun and talking and going up the hill at 18 miles an hour. It's hilarious, but nobody's paying attention to the clock. It doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. That's not, it's just to get me there. I. I'm concerned with how it descends, and this bike descends beautifully. So I've been on it, I don't know, I wanna say since November. It's been kind of a winter bike. Like I was saying, the place that we really love riding e-bikes here in the front range, or any bike, but especially e-bikes because you get so many more downhill runs and there's so many different downhill runs. It's really steep there and there's lots of options. It can be super loose and there are sections that are extremely tight where you're kind of sliding and you can't really stop yourself and then have to make a quick adjustment. Um, the MX wheels were amazing there. I really liked this bike descending. It was really predictable, a really intuitive jumper. I was able to more easily clear a lot of doubles and, and jumps on this bike than other e-bikes I've been riding. It, it just, I don't know, some bikes you take off a jump and you don't know what it's gonna feel like once you're in the air. That's not the case with this one, super intuitive. So yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been awesome. I've also been riding the Orbea Wild and I'll, com I'll start to just compare those now. Uh, the Orbea Wild I ordered through my local bike shop because it won all of the awards, it seems like, for best e-bike of 2023, best enduro e-bike. And so I ordered that one and I really wanted to compare the two. The Orbea is a full 29er, but kind of same category. It feels a little bit more planted and sure-footed in the very fast straight line kind of chunk stuff. Uh, whereas this bike, I kind of would find the limits in that type of terrain. And on the Orbea, I felt like the limit was a little bit further out and maybe I haven't found it yet, it is just extremely fast. Where this bike outshines downhill, um, where it outshines the Orbea, is kind of everywhere else, in the jumps, in the turns, it's quicker to turn, it's it's mixed wheel, they just, they turn phenomenal. And really like all of the, the really tight switchbacks, the loose kind of slow technical moves where you're just kind of like controlling your speed and you've got to make little micro adjustments or, or maybe get the rear wheel up and pivot a little bit on the front wheel. This bike just did all of that a lot better and took less input. They still both take quite a bit of input because they're e-bikes and they're super heavy, but that part you get used to. This bike, just with the mixed wheel and the geometry, it just seemed to kind of navigate really steep technical terrain better than my Orbea Wild. And both bikes are kind of in that mid 6,000s range at the time of this video, at least. And so I got the, the Wild M20, which comes with a mix of like Shimano Dior, and I think they throw an XT derailleur on there. Comes with, Fox Performance, not Performance Elite. It's kind of the three position, you know, and this bike comes with kind of the, the top of the top end rock shock. So they're not apples to apples spec wise. And so when I've been riding them, it hasn't been a huge deal, except for with the brakes. I don't know, the Shimano Dior's, I really liked them at first on the wild until I started kind of really wearing them in. Then that floating kind of bite point that Shimano's are famous for, came more and more into play where these TRPs are super predictable. The modulation is always the same. The bite point's always the same. Even though it's not adjustable, it's consistent. And with the Shimano's I'd find myself, sometimes the bite point would be really far out and I'd get arm pump because I'd be in a really steep section where you can't really get off the brakes. So kit wise, this bike blows the Orbea wild dollar for dollar out of the water. And for that reason, I think I would probably, if I had to do it all over again, you know, the Wild is a couple seconds faster in my favorite segments, and it definitely feels a little bit just safer at speed through craziness, but who cares? I don't know, this this bike, the spec's better, 
it navigates steep stuff better, and it, you only really sacrifice a little bit of that. And not a ton, it's great at high speed, it's just, I'll say this, this bike is good at high speed technical. The Wild is just great at it. It feels a little more like a race bike. And I think that's what I'm trying to say is, I'm not racing either of these bikes. This is for fun, this is candy. It kind of unlocks certain trail systems. I've, I've been telling all my friends who are like, oh, you got an e-bike, you know, and slowly they're getting e-bikes, by the way. But the way I kind of have, have always sold it is, it, it kind of turns some of these trail systems into an amusement park without lines, right? Whereas maybe we would have gone to that certain trail system and done three laps and been kind of gassed after 24, 2600 feet of climbing. On this, you can do 3,500 feet of climbing in half the time and still have energy to go home to the family or whatever. So yeah, it's not really about as much about racing. Like sure, I'm guilty of always trying to you know, get a top 10 segment or a top 10 spot on Strava like anybody. But uh, who cares? I don't know. This bike is, is a little more fun. The kit is more dialed. There's less I want to change here. Like when I slash a tire, I'll probably put my preferred tire on it. That's kind of how I would treat this. Um, and I'd maybe have some carbon bars sitting around the garage that would definitely swap out for these. But Otherwise, I, I would just ride this bike and smile all day and it would be great. So I a little bit wish I had just bought this one, but uh, Orbea wasn't gonna send me a Wild to demo for reviews anyway. So I, I am extremely happy with the Wild and I'll review that bike as well. But uh, a little bit of regret not buying this one. Battery life, I'll touch on it briefly. It's super subjective. I'm 200 pounds and the place I took it was very steep and I just kind of rode it in red most of the time. I was like, if I'm gonna have fun and, and beat the clock and get back home as soon as possible, I'm just gonna run it red, get up the hill as fast as I can. And I'll say this much, by the time the battery was getting close to expiring, my friends were done riding. I wanted a little bit more, but most people were done riding. And so if I had the time and I wanted to get eight, nine, 10 laps in at my favorite trails, I could probably dial back the assistance a little bit and get that. But I don't think the battery life is holding me back at all. And on that note, it was very similar on the wild. I'm not really seeing a big difference. I think that the Orbea battery life, and I'd have to double check this, might be a little bit smaller, but I think that bike maybe just climbs a little more efficiently. Again, I don't personally care about the climbs too much, but if that is a big deal to you, the Orbea is full 29er and probably a little bit more efficient linkage. Um, so it seems to climb a little bit better. But again, they're both just kind of rocketing you up the hill. So things that I kind of want to point out that I absolutely love, the kit. I keep harping on this. It really doesn't leave a lot of room to desire much more. The ride quality, very predictable, pretty stable, only gets knocked offline at really high speed in chunky terrain jumps incredibly well and for such a big bike it's actually surprisingly easy to maneuver and to get the front wheel up things that i not really things that i hate but things i would change the the tires if you like this schwalbe kind of magic mary and big betty combo great leave it you don't need to change the thing personally i didn't find them to be the most predictable or stable in in kind of tough situations uh, they would kind of slide out for me at, at moments I didn't want them to. The battery cover, you're going to want to check that. This one actually flew off on me twice without warning. So, you know, there's three or four screws there that you just want to kind of make sure that you're, you're checking here and there because when it flies off and you lose a screw, if you don't have a strap, you're kind of screwed and you don't really want to fill that port up with mud. So what I did was I had a frame strap that carried like tools and stuff up here. I just put the tools in my bag and used it to hold the battery cover. Not a big deal, um, just a couple of little screws that you need to keep your eye on. Just like any new bike, you know, things come loose, check your pivot bear, you know, your pivot bolts and everything like that. Otherwise, man, it's gonna kind of suck to give this one back. I've also had a couple friends riding it, everyone loves it. So that's it. If you have any specific questions or want me to address anything, you know, more acutely, drop a note in the comments, but it's, it's tough, right? You can't go to your local bike shop and demo this bike. It's direct to consumer. So that's kind of why I like to review bikes like Commence All because they don't show up. I didn't see them in any of the big e-bike shootouts. And 
they should have been there because in my opinion, I'm riding the one, the king of these reviews, the Orbea Wild, and there's a lot I like about this bike more than I like about my Orbea Wild. So I'd love to see the bigger publications start to, I don't know, bring Commensal in and start reviewing some of their some of their bikes that are awesome, which there are many. Again, I'm not paid by Commensal, but they let me take these bikes for reviews, which is sweet. So yeah, drop a, drop a comment, a like, a subscribe. Uh, spring is back, so I'll be dropping more reviews soon. So keep your eyes peeled, and until then, see you later.